Minister Don Pramut Vinay, Kun Chavarat as the most senior representative of the Thai entrepreneurial families tonight, Vicomte Philippe de Spulberg as the most senior representative of the Belgian entrepreneurial families tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as the focus of our evening is the friendship between Belgium and Thailand and the way that friendship has developed since the mission of Gustave Roland Jacquemin to this country, Count Jerry found that it may be interesting that I say a few words about um, our Belgian kings, because as we know, the friendship be between the Belgian royal house and the Thai royal family is probably one of the most important um, pillars of the friendship between our countries. And I've just been these last three years the Grand Chamberlain of the Royal Household in Brussels. So I accompanied our new king in the three first years of his mandate. And um, I thought I may share with you some of the experiences I've had without betraying any secret, but give my personal vision of the way our king is uh, doing his job serving our country. I, do, I did prepare a few pictures first uh, to underline once again, like Count Jerry did, the friendship between the two royal households. Uh, uh, households. And uh, everybody remembers, of course, that uh, uh, His Majesty King Bumibol and our King Bodoain uh, were probably like brothers. They both of them studied as young men in Switzerland for historical reasons. The political background in Belgium and in Thailand was very complicated at that time, and they were staying there in Switzerland, and I think their friendship started to develop there. And then both of them became very, very young sovereign kings of, of their countries, which has also reinforced the friendship. And this is a, a visit of your king and your queen to Belgium, and there as well. And this is our current king, King Philip and Queen Matilda, when they came to Thailand and had a friendly meeting with uh, King Hamad IX. Um, th the king in Belgium has mainly three roles in constitutional law, so I'm not going to give a lesson in constitutional law, but uh, the three roles are uh, that the king is the head of the state, we say that he's the head of the nation, and in Thailand, you would say that he's the father of the people. We prefer to say that he's the king of the people. He's a king very close to his people. And I will try to develop each of those points with a few pictures from activities that I had the honor to organize for King Philip. As head of state, the king, of course, often says that he's the first ambassador for Belgium. And every year, he receives the diplomatic corps, my dear colleague, the former Thai ambassador in Brussels, remembers that reception. Um, your minister uh, has been ambassador in Brussels as well. Uh, and so they receive once a year the diplomats accredited to Brussels. Once a year also, as head of our state, the king delivers a big lecture to the authorities of, 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 the, of the country. It means that in that big room, which is the throne, the throne ceremony place of the royal palace, you have the 600 most important people, politically important, civil servants, politicians, uh, in, in our country. Uh, if you were to write a book about law and what is power in Belgium, well, you do have a picture there. The 600 people are all the highest magistrates, all the ministers are there, all the people who, who run Belgium. And, and they listen to the king who usually tries to pass a message. Um, the last speech took place a few days ago, and the main message of the king was to warn the decision makers in Belgium and the population against populism, which is a political development that we face in Europe, like elsewhere in the world. As head of state, the king is also head of the army. Now, that's, that is written like that in our constitution. The, the last king of the Belgians, who was uh, actually commanding the army was our King Albert during the First World War, who, who really was fighting with his men to guarantee the freedom of a little part of our Belgian territory. Uh, after that, the king lost the actual power to command the army, but he still has uh, this formal role. And here, the, our king is, uh, we organized that trip. He visited Jordan, because he's, of course, also close with the King of Jordan. 
and he wanted to pay homage to the courage of the Belgian soldiers who are fighting today in Jordan against Islamist terrorism. The king is also a jet pilot, so he, he knows what he talks about. This is an image of a very moving trip that our king made to London, where he was invited by Queen Elizabeth for a huge ceremony in 2014 about Flanders Field. You know that, uh, unfortunately, a large part of the First World War happened in Belgium. We still have bombs from the First World War in our fields. Every year, you've got farmers in West Flanders who would find not unexploded bombs in the soil. And because Britain lost so many young men during that war, the, the British organized every year a ceremony. And that was uh, to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the beginning of that butchery that we call First World War. Thailand, by the way, was of course an allied country. Thailand fought with the allied countries during First World War and the embassy, my collaborator, Mr. Nion, who is here tonight, organized with his Thai partners a very good exhibition about the cooperation between Thailand and Belgium during First World War. And this exhibition will probably be shown again in July in the Palace of Hua Hin. And the last point about the role of our king as head of state is that the king is married to the queen. Now, the queen does not have a role in the constitution, but he's, she's the first lady in our country, and she's very keen to serve that country as well. And she serves that country mainly by working with the United Nations. She's a special advocate of the United Nations for the Sustainable Development Goals. She's also the honorary president of UNICEF Belgium, and I will have the honor to accompany her next week to Laos, where she will visit some villages and some good projects that UNICEF is organizing there in cooperation with the Laos authorities. The second role of the king is when we say head of the nation, meaning he has a role to identify, it's not written in the Constitution, but to identify themes which are important for the future of our society. And once he has identified those themes, the king tries, and he works very hard, to build bridges, uh, to put together people who usually would not speak with each other. Northern Belgians, Southern Belgians, to put it that way. Uh, people from the economic world, people from the political world, sometimes uh, people from the world of the schools and people from other uh, scopes of societies. And in this case, for instance, um, he has a lot of interest for retired citizens and uh, how we can best all cooperate to make sure that our retired citizens remain very active. And by the way, there is a, probably some plans also to develop cooperation with Thailand about that to see whether our both systems of social security and healthcare can perhaps cooperate better in the future. This is probably the most important file that the, the king has been um, working on in the past three years. Together we had looked at some statistics about youth unemployment. That is a problem that all our countries are facing. If you look the, if you look the statistics of the OECD, you would see that there are basically two groups of countries in, in the Western world as far as youth unemployment is concerned. You've, you've got countries, I'm not going to give names here, but in Southern Europe, um, but also France or Belgium, where the, um, the, the rate of unemployment among young people is between 20 and 50 percent. There are countries in Europe, regions in Europe, where one young person in two does not have a job and is looking for a job. And then at the other extreme, you've got countries like Germany, Austria, Luxembourg, Switzerland, which have between 5 and 10 percent youth unemployment. And the king was convinced that there was basically one main reason it is the school system in Germany, in Switzerland, in Austria. Uh, it is what they call the dual Ausbildung system. There is a strong cooperation between companies, uh, entrepreneurs, and the world of the school and the school system so that the young people get an opportunity very early when they are 15 or 16 to study a large part of their time in the company, uh, in the workshop, to learn a, a job, to, to have a, a real work, a real job, and of course, when they finish their studies, very easily they continue to work in the company and they get a good contract there. So the king wanted to 
have that German-speaking concept of dual Ausbildung, um, uh, how do you say, vocational training, to have that better understood in Belgium. And we organized a big mission to Germany with all the ministers which in Belgium are working on education. I'm talking probably about, about 10 persons, 10 ministers, but also with the employers' federations, the trade unions, uh, school directors, young people, journalists. And we had a tour of three days in Germany where we visited factories and where, under the leadership of the king, everybody could learn better how the German system of vocational training is working. And, well, we don't measure the results of the work of the king, but uh, as you may, my, my, Belgian, uh, my fellow Belgians here know that both in Flanders and in French-speaking Belgium, we are reforming the education sector. Um, and this vocational training, more cooperation between enterprises and the school system, that is a priority in both parts of the world. And I think that the commitment of the king has played a role in that. The king is also very much concerned about the economy, and you, you know that. Um, he asked his sister, Princess Astrid, or sometimes himself, to lead Belgian trade missions abroad. And this is also helping our country to gather forces and to promote the image of Belgium abroad and with the, the best of our companies and help to develop contacts and partnerships with uh, other companies uh, abroad. As head of the nation, the king is also very keen to talk with um, Belgians belonging not to the mainstream. This is, for instance, a roundtable that we organized with representatives of the Muslim community in Belgium. You may know that in the 50s and 60s, when Belgium was still rebuilding itself after the Second World War, we saw this afternoon a picture of the Artois Brewery in Leuven, destroyed in 45 after the bombings, and it was rebuilt after that. Now, to help to the rebuilding of our country, Belgium asked a lot of gastarbeiter, of uh, workers, to come first from Italy, and then they came from Morocco and Turkey, Muslim countries. And those people have played an important role in the economic boom that we had in Belgium, the economic success that we had in Belgium in the 60s and early 70s. Now, their children are there, of course, and they are Belgian people uh, um, uh, who are part of the Muslim religion. And the king is very keen to listen to them and have this dialogue and make sure that their integration in the Belgian society is as successful as possible. Another important community in Belgium is the Jewish community. Uh, the Belgian people of Jewish origin play also an extremely important role in our economy, in our country, in our society, in our education. Uh, Count Jerry mentioned the importance of the diamond industry in Antwerp. Well, that's an industry which has, which has been largely developed by Belgian citizens of Jewish origin. You know that in May 2014, there was a terrible bomb attack against the Jewish Museum in Brussels and the king wanted to visit that museum. So there we are, that is the, if you go to Brussels, visit that museum, it's very interesting. It tells the story of the Jews in my country and uh, we are proud of uh, what they've been doing for Belgium in the last centuries. Last but not least, the, the, the king takes part in the, you had a few days ago the Bangkok run, the ba Bangkok marathon, I think. People from all over the world came to Bangkok to, to run. And we have the same thing in Brussels and the king wants to take part. He is himself a very sportive person, and he sees also it as a way to promote the image of Brussels in the world and to uh, convince more tourists to visit our country. This brings me to the last role of the king. Next to the king is head of the state, it's more constitutional, is head of the nation, more social themes, and he's also a person who is immensely popular in our country, both the king and the queen. And I just wanted to show a few pictures. That is something very strong. If you work for the king, you realize that, that, that link between the Belgian population and, and the king. Uh, and the monarchy certainly gets a lot of legitimacy from that d direct link between the king and its people. It's not only that he descends from the first king of the Belgians by blood, it's also the fact that he is uh, extremely popular, more popular than most ministers. There may be some jealousy there sometimes. And you can see here the, the crowd in front of our royal palace in Brussels, an exceptionally pleasant day in Brussels. We don't have a blue sky every day, but uh, 
Uh, you can see the, the, the crowd there. You can see the king with the uh, Red Devils, our football team. And uh, this is the royal family uh, in the streets of Brussels. They do that. They just go on the streets of Brussels and they like to speak with the people. It's an enrichment for them. I never, see, I never saw my king as happy as after those direct meetings with humble citizens, that he could listen to them, speak with them. He gets a lot of strength about that. He gets a lot of uh, strength to continue serving the country. And this is also uh, perhaps the last image when you can see the population um, gathering to meet them. And I'm convinced that uh, for the population also, these are important moments. So, ladies and gentlemen, I, 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 was, I tried to share with you a few experiences I've, I've, I've had of um, activities that I've organized for the King and the Queen in Belgium. Um, and um, with that, I would like to, of course, wish a lot of success to this friendship between our both countries and to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.